Glory, glory, glory. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. The word of God is worth the drive. <laughs> Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven and ask, get filled more. <laughs> Say more. <laughs> we want more. We want more, Jesus. We want more of the Holy Spirit. We want more. You know, the only way you get more is you got to die more. Amen? Amen? Turn to your neighbor and tell them it's a good day to die. Amen. To yourself. <laughs> death is a wonderful place. There is a third level of death called the master's level. But we're not going to talk about that tonight. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know we're in perilous times? Not, and, and, and the things that are happening are just incredible to me, blowing me away. But you know, God is on the move. He is exposing, not as fast as I wish he would expose, but he's doing it. You know, thank God I'm not God. We'd all be in trouble, yes. including me. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'd all be home by now. <laughs> Earth would be gone, everything would be gone. Every demon would be gone, demonic forces, gone. We'd be partying. Hallelujah. I love the party. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter two. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Is everybody there? 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 2 verse 14. Let's speak it together. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Now i got to explain a couple quick things here. The word Christ means anointed. It's the anointed one. Jesus is the anointing with the, an, 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 uh, the anointed one with the anointing. And again, the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. All packed up in the Holy Spirit. So he says something powerful. He says, look at God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. In other words, you can't lose in the anointing. Amen. You can't lose in the anointing. It's impossible. The anointing comes against all the gates of hell. No demon can stand against the anointing. So when you're walking in the anointing, you're walking in supernatural power, strength, divine nature, and God is with you. Because if God is with you, who can be against you? Amen? Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph, that's victory, in Christ, in the anointing. And there's something that happens here. And through us, everyone say us. Everyone say me. He diffuses, in other words, he spreads, he expands the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. In other words, every place you go, as long as you're walking in the anointing. Amen? For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death. And to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, as so many, pleading or peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. In other words, we are diffusing, we are spreading out the fragrance of the aroma of his presence through his knowledge wherever you and I go, as long as we are filled in walking in the anointing. I don't care if you're praying in tongues, it doesn't mean you have the anointing. That's a gift. Amen? You catch the anointing. 
And you catch the anointing through praise and worship. You catch the anointing by being perfectly obedient and perfectly surrendered. You catch the anointing. The anointing is caught. Do you remember when Elijah was going up to heaven, Elisha, and he threw his um, mantle down? What happened? He had to catch it, didn't he? Amen? He had to catch it. We catch the anointing. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the aroma of death to those who are lost is what you will release where you go. <laughs> there is an aroma of life to those who are willing to follow. This aroma is the essence of divine order. This aroma that is released is called the essence of divine order. In other words, if you're wa not walking in divine order, the essence to be released will not happen. Amen? In Romans 8. How many of y'all want favor? Well, let me tell you, that will also be released. Romans chapter 8. Starting at verse 1. Essence of divine order. So if you're out of order, it's just like driving a car that's out of tune. It's always missing. It has no pickup. It's just running right. I mean, it's a, not running smooth. Not, it can't flow. The only thing is it leaves a lot of puffs of smoke. It's toxic. Romans, verse 1. There, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are what? In Christ Jesus. Now he explains only to those, there's no condemnation, there's no condemnation, no condemning, to those who are in Christ Jesus who what? Who do not walk according to the flesh. Hello. So if you're a believer and you're walking according to the flesh, is there condemnation? Yes. Yes. But there's no condemnation to those who are not walking according to the flesh, but walking according to the what? Spirit. Why? Because walking to the, according to the Spirit is walking in the anointing. There is a place of perfect obedience and perfect surrender. For the law of the Spirit of life. Anybody remember what we talked about the law of the Spirit of life is? The law, the perfect law of freedom is to deny yourself pick up the cross and follow. That is the perfect law of freedom. That is a divine order. Jesus fulfilled it. And so you and I must live a life of fulfilling it. So for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Why? Because you're denying yourself, you're picking the cross up, you're following, you're battling, and you're fighting. For the law could not could not do in that which was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement. So that means that there's a requirement, isn't there? That means you got to cooperate. You can't just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, sit home, twiddle your thumbs, and watch all soap operas. You ain't worth a poop. Amen? you got to cooperate. The only way to, to overcome things is to cooperate. That's, God, that's why God requires forsake not to assemble, eat the word of God, read the word of God, speak the word of God, decree, and everything else. Worship, get filled with the spirit. That's all a part of cooperation. No cooperation, no victory. Why? Because it's not cooperation, there's no anointing. So there is a righteous requirement of the law that... Uh, might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So that requirement of the law that is called the, uh, the law, the perfect law of freedom, is so that you and I constantly deny ourselves, pick up the cross and fight to follow. Because if you don't fight, can you follow? No, you'll be misled. You'll be distracted. For those who live, verse 5, is everybody there? For those who live according to the flesh... 
set their minds on the things of the flesh. That's a natural realm. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded or fleshly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Your old man can never get saved. He's dead. He will never go home. He's been separated from you, but he's still in you. He's now called your flesh. He is a servant of Satan. You were born in darkness and sin. We were born rebellious and offsprings of unrighteousness. Does everybody understand that? You were born, we were all born morons, you know what I'm saying? That's why you had to be born again. When you got born again, you got a new spirit. And that new spirit now loves you and loves him. And is always trying to connect with the Holy Spirit. So your new man is joined with the Holy Spirit now. But your old man is still there. You wake up with him. You sleep with him. That's why every time you get up, that's why sometimes you think worse first. Hello? Hello? Because the old man is always trying to release his own fragrance of the past. That's why the anointing, the more you are filled with the Spirit, the further you're away from, your, from the old man. It's like being liquefied between two people. You know, if somebody was in one of those glass liquid things, you can barely hear the person. Amen? But when someone's not filled with the Spirit, the old man is always running. It's like that voice that never shuts up. Everybody been around anyone like that? Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Shut up. All right. So in this, we see here, to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind hates the things of God. That's the old man. For it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So your old man is going to come against you. And the devil and the demons will use your old man to get to you if he can. And once you open the door, then they come in. See, they go knock, knock. And you say, who's there? Well, that's it. Verse, uh, verse 8. So then those who are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. Please God. Wow. So the law of the spirit of life, again, in freedom, is to deny yourself, fight, follow. This is also divine order, isn't it? There's another divine order that must parallel with it. It is to believe, receive, and execute. Those are parallel. They run together. Does everybody understand? Why? Because if you're not believing and receiving and executing, you are not putting things into practice. If you're not putting things into practice, you can't overcome. How many of y'all know practice makes perfect? We've heard that since we've been kids. And when you first learned, were trying to ride a bicycle, if you recall those days, do you remember how many times you fell and bruised yourself? But everybody else was riding that bike, and you just want, you had an older brother or sister or whatever, and they were cruising. You were on a three wheeler, and you just couldn't wait to get on that two wheeler. I know I was like that. <laughs> My brother would cruise, man. I couldn't wait to toss that three wheels. Then I got a two wheeler that still had two more wheels on each side, and I couldn't wait for those things to go. Finally, I took them off, and I crashed. <laughs> Hurt myself. But got up again because I, I know I couldn't outrun to catch up to my brother. Finally, I got on that bike, and phew, one day it just kept going. I couldn't stop too well then, you know. So I threw myself on the lawn, you know. But then I started learning that there was brakes. Yeah, brakes, okay, opposite way. I mean, it was kind of a strange thing. I've been fighting so long to go forward, and all of a sudden I had to go opposite to break it, you know. Didn't have handles then. But you know, practice made perfect. <coughs> then you couldn't get me off that bike. Man, I would ride to Russia if I needed to. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 1.
So again, the law, the essence of divine order, there is two divine orders. That's to deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That's fight. The word pick up the cross, because if you pull a cross out of the ground, what does it turn into? A sword. That's the fight. And there's no advancement without fight. And then the parallel of that is to believe, receive, and execute. In other words, put it into practice. Second Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. In verse 2, let's speak it. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? In the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things. Everyone say all things. That pertain to life and godliness. Now, listen, he's given us everything. It's all available. That pertain to life on this side. You don't need it on the other side. Amen? You need it now. And godliness. Why? So you can release the fragrance of the king. And his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great and precious promises, that through these you may what? Be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in a world through what? Through lust. In other words, increasing in his knowledge to release the aroma of his presence and divine power. To, in other words, we become joint heirs. Everyone say joint heirs. Of the divine power that he gives to us so that you and I lack nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. He gives us all things that pertain to life on this side and he releases his fragrance and godliness of his divine nature to in us. Is everybody with me? In us, the essence of divine order brings divine power and divine nature. So there must be a, this divine order is important. That essence of divine order, that parallel of both divine orders as they're joined together will release the fragrance of the king. It will release favor in your life. Why? Because it brings his presence. It releases his presence. Christ in us, the essence of life. The mystery of life and the hope of his glory. Why? To be released into the atmosphere of deception. Remember, we're fighting an atmosphere. We're fighting the prince of power of air. Everywhere we go, we want to change the atmosphere. When you get up in the morning, you need to change your atmosphere. Amen? Amen? Before you hurt somebody. Especially yourself. There must be a resemblance between us and Christ at all times. And it will not come without his presence. which is the key of promoting divine order, his presence. Acts 19. Acts 19. In verse 11, is everybody there? Acts 19, verse 11. Let's speak it. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, 
and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now, we have got a point of contact healing ministry to where we are, we've got stuffed animals that we will be sending into the hospitals where children are. So they've been praying over them. That's what's in morning prayer on our campus. There's two bins of about 120 of these stuffed little things. And uh, so they've been praying on every day for 30 days. And then uh, I think it's next week, we'll be bringing them here Friday night and praying them over. And then we'll be sending them out. Why? We're praying a point of contact. Amen? The power's not in the little bears and little doggies. It's a point of contact. Amen? So when you're laying hands on someone, it's a point of contact. All right. Verse 13. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Why? Because Paul carried the what? Resemblance of Christ. And let me tell you, those demons know. They know. I don't care if you're born again, filled with the Holy Spirit and everything else, speaking in tongues. Listen, if the anointing's not on you, they know. Because the anointing is Christ. Amen? The anointing is Christ. I could be feeling sick. I could be in pain. But when the anointing comes on me, I'm fine. It's when it lifts, I got to hurry up home. Does everybody understand? Unless he chooses to heal me right then and there. But when the anointing is upon me to preach or whatever it is, because remember, it's the anointing that teaches us, not man. The anointing teaches us. But when the anointing is there, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. But when the anointing lifts, whoa. I hate that. <laughs> but anyways, praise God. So what happened? Now, again, they saw Jesus in Paul because he, there was a resemblance, right? So the evil spirit and answered and said to them, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So if you're going to cast out a devil, you better make sure. The anointing's on you, or you may walk out without clothes. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Now look at what happened. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling of their deeds. Also many of those who had practiced what? Magic, witchcraft. Brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Why? Think about this. Because the essence of Christ was released. Does everybody get it? The essence of Christ was released. That's how Paul had to do was show up. He didn't say a word. Amen? They said, the demon said it. Jesus, we know, Paul, we know, but who are you? Paul didn't even cast the devil out. That thing beat that dude up, stripped him. He ran out of the house butt naked. And everybody saw him. We're freaked out, but the essence of Christ was released. And you know what it did? It brought conviction. It brought reality. What did it do? It pushed back the atmosphere of deception. And all of a sudden, people had a view. People had a quickening. Yes. Yes. The problem is it comes back shortly. 
Does everybody understand? That's why when we leave here, we're like, yes, all right, cool, things are great. Then all of a sudden, all kinds of stuff starts happening. The enemy's trying to steal everything that's been imparted in us. That's his job. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? Oh, Paul was perfectly surrendered and walked in perfect obedience. He aligned himself with the divine order and the essence of Christ was released and seen. In John 16. Is everybody okay? Amen. Oh, happy days. John 16 and verse 5. Jesus said to them, he says, Now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where I'm going. But because I have said these things you, to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And who's the helper? The Holy Spirit. Amen. And when he has come, he will convict the world of what? Sin. And of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. And of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Who's the ruler of this world? Satan. For some people, that's still not a reality. They still think the devil is some little dude on the shoulder with a pointed, ta pointed tail or something. He says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Why could they? He, he said this because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. And there were things that he wanted to release to them. They wouldn't be able to comprehend or understand it yet. And if you recall, when Jesus was telling him, look at, you must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood if you want eternal life. Many of them freaked out and got offended and never followed Jesus again because they actually thought he meant it because they were not able to interpret what he was saying. See, it's the same thing with this Bible. You know who wrote this, wrote this Bible? The Holy Spirit wrote it. Amen? So if you don't know the author, are you going to interpret it correctly? No, that's why people are still saying, oh, tongues are for only the disciples. Healing's not anymore. You can't raise the dead. You can't do this. People, you know, there's no filling of the tongues. And, and the, there's no gifts of the Spirit. I mean, this is just not the doctrine of Christ Jesus because of the lack of interpretation. Many of this has occurred because people were brought up in that tradition. I was brought up a Roman Catholic. I roamed the earth for the truth for many years. <laughs> Until Jesus knocked me off my horse. It was actually a Harley, but... <laughs> Same thing that happened to Saul happened to me. Fill me with the Spirit, and I realized, my gosh, he loves me. Everything I was looking for my whole life was him and didn't know it. Everything I attempted to do, I was looking for him. See, people are still looking for him, but they're looking in the wrong places because they just don't know. So they become workaholics. They, they're chasing money. They're chasing sex, drugs, and rock and roll. They're chasing um, fame. They're chasing everything because they're looking for fulfillment, but that's only coming from the presence of God. See, it's either the essence of Christ being released or it's the essence of the devil, his presence being released. And there is the presence of evil. That's why he's called the prince of power of error. We battle that every single day. Amen? Hallelujah. In verse 13 again. However, when he, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit has come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare to who? You. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I say that he who will take of mine and declare it to you. In other words, that's why you and I are joint heirs. 
You know, we have a hard time comprehending these things without the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine that you're a joint heir of the Creator? Snap. I'm a joint heir. I'm an offspring of God Almighty. I'm His Son. He loves me and I love Him and we have a good time together. We dance together. We do everything together. I chauffeured Him for many years. I had a 1946 Chrysler limousine stretch limo, B.C., I used to own an antique limousine service. After I got saved, I got it out of the hock because I got busted. And I put Jesus and gold on both. They had suicide doors that opened up. And I put Jesus and gold on back of the doors. It was all black, white walls. It was a gorgeous car. I'd be driving people, man, to my I show for Jesus. <laughs> you want to get in the back seat? Meet him? <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyways, <laughs> so listen, Jesus had to, had to obey the essence of divine order himself to release himself. Does everybody get it? He had to deny himself, pick up the cross, he's the originator of it, and follow the will of God. And then, you know what he had to do? He had to maintain a belief system. He had to re continue to receive what the Father was saying and he had to execute the will of God all the way through. They ran in a parallel to where he died on the cross, went to hell, kicked butt, rose again, and released the Holy Spirit to all of us. Amen. So if he had to do it, so do you and I. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory, Romans 8. Thank you for the anointing, Lord. Glory. Romans 8, 18. Is everybody there? Romans 8, 18. Let's speak it together. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in what? In us. Now that's powerful. Anybody suffering? Everybody suffers. Look in the mirror. You're suffering. Everybody wants to look better. Everybody wants to do something better. But we're suffering in the area to where we're constantly denying ourselves. That area of constantly moving everything that, that eye syndrome, you know, me, myself, and I are constantly moving it. I, 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 it's actually a demonic pizza, amen? We want to constantly move it away. We are constantly in that area, you're being hard-pressed, you're being beaten on every area the, uh, through music, news, disappointments, everything, whatever. Either disappointment in yourself or somebody else's disappointment. Offense, rejection. All of these areas, man, we're, we're, we're constantly suffering. But all of these are working for us. It doesn't feel like it, does it? That's why I don't ask people how you feel. Because you know what? I don't care. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go a little further. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be what? Revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Is that you and us? You and me, I mean. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. That's the whole earth. All creation. It's all suffering. And it's going to be delivered into the glorious freedom, liberty of the children of God. That's you and me. Everything is coming to us. It'd be nice if it came tonight. But we got some more suffering to do. Why? Because that suffering is purifying you. It's exposing the things that are displeasing to God. And it's bringing you more and more 
from glory to glory into the image of Christ so that you can release more and more of his essence, of his presence. Is everybody okay? It is the suffering Christ to release the essence of Christ in the world, to bring life to the dead, sight to the blind, freedom to the bound and imprisoned, and hope to the hopeless. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews. Oh, happy day. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 5. Let's speak it. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son and today I've begotten you. Do you know that the day you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's what he said to you? You are my child. I have begotten you today. You're mine. And he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he, what? Suffered. So it's working for you, even though we don't feel so good when it happens. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who what? Obey. To all who what? Obey. To all who what? Obey. Obey him. This is where many people get lost, I think. They think just because they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they just go out and do whatever they want and make it home. Uh-uh. Because the word believe means to follow. If you're not a follower, he says you're a liar. Remember how many people have come up to him and said, Lord, Lord, hey, I'm here, let me in. He said, I don't know you. Ooh. See, they thought they had a relationship, but they really never did because they practiced lawlessness. They became lovers of the world instead of lovers of God's presence. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him, called by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. You know, there are believers who've been accepted Jesus Christ for 30 years and are still drinking milk. And they don't want to grow. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and, and evil. So you and I learn obedience through the things that we suffer. Amen? So we don't repeat them again. 2 Corinthians 4.16. 2 Corinthians 4.16. The essence of, of divine order. You know, the word says that a house divided cannot stand. So if your house is not in divide or, divine order, you, it's, it's actually divided. It can't stand. It can't stand against the powers of darkness. The word says you can't serve two masters. Why? Because he says if, you just, if you're trying to serve two masters, you'll end up serving the devil. In verse 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, let's speak it. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, our light affliction, it's called suffering, 
which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? They're eternal. This light affliction, for some of us, it seems longer than just a light affliction. Suffering is working and learning obedience to death. Amen? Why? So remember, the more dead we are, the more we're able to release the fragrance of life of Christ. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. You know, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's not changed. It's the enemy that comes in and twists doctrine and all kinds of other stuff. Starts denominations. Starts all kinds of other doctrines where they compete with one another. I'm still looking for the first Baptist church. seems like they're on every corner, but I want to know which one was the first one. How can they say this one's the first one, this one's the first one? They can't be. It's got to be the second, third, or six thousands, or whatever. I want to know where the first one was. Hallelujah. Verse 2. Let's speak it. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you count it all joy? That's a choice, you know. Amen. Amen. That's a choice. I didn't say you were going to feel like counting it all joy. Amen. Because you're not led by your feelings. Amen. You're not going to be led by your emotional pains. You're going to get rid of them. So, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, when God rebukes you, when you are chastised or corrected. Count it all joy. Don't take it personal. Amen. Somebody get it. Somebody say, oh, they hate me. <laughs> and then the enemy beats you up. I'll never make it. I'll never be good enough. No, you won't. None of us will. But we're perfected in Christ. So you want to stay in there. Amen? So you can count it all joy. And it doesn't say if you fall into various trials, I guarantee you once you leave this room, you can expect another trial. Amen. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. <laughs> I love it. So every one of us is tested. Faith is the arena of connection to the presence of God. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen? Hearing his voice. And faith comes also by praying in tongues. It increases your faith. But what do you need faith for? To get connected to the presence of God. Because your lifeline is his presence. Now it says here that knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Patience is endurance. It doesn't mean that you're sitting there doing nothing. I'm patient. No. And it doesn't mean that you're a patient. Amen? Amen. It means endurance. You are learning endurance. So, in verse 4, but let endurance or patience do what? Have its what? Perfect work. Why? Because it's going to allow you to suffer a little bit. That you may what? Be, perf be perfect and complete in what? Lacking nothing. Does everybody get this? See, because you're going to just suffer a little bit more. I didn't say you're going to enjoy suffering, but you might as well laugh through it. No sense of being miserable about it and blaming everybody else for your suffering. You brought it on yourself. Hello. 
The word tells us, when I went astray, I got afflicted. Hello. Now, just step out of that puddle of affliction when it's happening. Don't sit there and go, oh, 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 you know, and freak out and whatever. Blame everyone else. And don't get into woe is me syndrome. Amen. Step out of the puddle, pick up your sword, and cut some head off. Amen. Spirit heads. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. Praise God. Is everybody okay? So let's do verse 4 again. Let patience have its perfect work. Let that endurance for your sufferings have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. We need to ask wisdom every day. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable in all of his ways. And we want to come out of that. We don't want to get stuck in that. Amen? Praise God. Testing of your connection, allowing a level of endurance to be reached till there is no want. Does everybody say, I'm going to have to repeat that one. So this is happening. You're being tested the it is the testing of your connection to the presence of God, allowing a level of endurance to be reached till there is no want of worldly pleasure or corruption. But the desire you have is the heavenly essence of light and life and the character of Christ. That's what you're looking for. That's what you want. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, the essence of divine nature, I mean divine order, sorry. It's what a judge always says, order in the court. Amen? He's trying to get everybody's attention so he can release something. Sometimes... I've never really, yeah, I guess I have. I was going to say, I've never seen him release a blessing, but I got blessed. <laughs> Snap. I was supposed to do a mandatory prison term, and he cut me loose on a mandatory sentence. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. Let's speak it. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan and be in burden, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us a spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether what? Good or evil. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. We groan within us. Sometimes we don't even know we're groaning. Sometimes we're in a state of unknowing. And, and sometimes there's a, I, I don't want to say oppress, but there's a concern within you. And it's a sense of why am I here? What is going on? And these questions start to come to you. And there's an area within you 
that you are groaning, and the whole purpose is because your spirit, man, is trying to get closer to the presence of God. And you can't figure it out here. But when you get in God's presence, oh, and you know what? You didn't care what you were just groaning about a little while ago. Because it was fulfilled. It was met. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter chapter 1. Without divine order, there's no divine victory. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and, now, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Why? that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and the glory at the rev revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of of your souls. So in other words, the essence of divine order will bring salvation. Amen. Amen. It brings salvation. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray tonight that the seed that's been imparted would be protected, sealed by the Spirit, covered by the blood, and allowed to grow and bear fruit for your glory, penetrating all of our members and memories in our body and in our soul and in our spirit, bringing things to remembrance as we work out the arena of perfect surrender, perfect obedience, and perfect love to release the essence and the aroma of your presence, truth, and character wherever we go. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.